Hello! Welcome to Dreamlight Valley. This will probably be a quick little tour video. I have uh, played a fair amount. The uh, I'm seeing that the audio is a little loud. Just give me a quick second. There we go. So, this has been my recent kind of Animal Crossing replacement, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. Essentially, I've just been... Oh, that's unfortunate. Don't like when I really turn around like that. This has essentially just been chill farming. It, it's kind of a cross of Animal Crossing with a few other games and sections, I find. Very zen-like, very chill. It's, uh, here what I'm doing is I'm just planting a whole, whole bunch of carrots. A bunch of vegetables that I've run out of from cooking and crafting. I haven't really moved too many of the houses around. You do get the choice to put a few of the characters' houses. I don't know exactly how far in I am. I'm in the mid-twenties for level. Recently got the ability to smash ice and smash the uh, coral stones that wash up onto the beach. What I do really like about this game is that you do have the ability to move There we go. Donald got another level up. You do have the ability... Oh, my goodness, it doesn't want to let me... It gets so lost out of sync for a little bit after that. You, um, you do have the ability to essentially move anything and everything, which is kind of huge, because one of the biggest challenges in games like Animal Crossing is that am I frozen or something? What's going on here? There we go. Ah. Oh. I do find sometimes with I'm I'm playing this on PC but with a controller. Sometimes it feels like there's a little bit of a a delay. I don't know if that's because it's an early access game or if it's just because you know, wireless compared to wired. I'm not exactly sure what the the reasoning is, but there are occasional times where I'll select something or do something and then it just seems to not immediately switch over to what I expect it would, which is not the end of the world in a game like this because it's not as though I'm battling some enemy that's going to take me out or take me down in the event of me not being immediately responsive to the situation. So it's not a huge deal, but it is something I find I keep running into and I'm not quite sure if it's something on my end or if that's something in the game in general. Unsure. Oh, oh it keeps... Uh, I've run into this too before. The game will let you just keep planting, but then eventually it gets to a point where it kind of, for some reason, gets stuck. And you can do the same with um, with digging. So you just hold down the button and off you go. Which is nice. This is another element that you don't get with Animal Crossing. Oh, here we go. We leveled up. 28. Now I know exactly what level I am. <laughs> Refills your energy, which is great. Hopefully I have enough seeds to fill this space. That looks like exactly enough. There was that little stutter. Alright. Now all we have to do is water it. 
I've chosen to have Donald with me because he's a, for me at least, a relatively newer character. I'll show the map in a section here. I'm gonna water these all up because they'll be pretty quick. Even if I don't stick around to harvest them. There we go. Two levels to Donald. There's a lot of guides out there that are saying just bring a person, one of the characters with you whenever you're doing anything. And they are 100% correct. Just, it doesn't even matter what the character has as their primary. But right now, I'm not harvesting anything, so it doesn't matter if I want more of anything or less of anything. So that actually works out really well. Leave that all watered. Okay, so I haven't moved the house. Still think I have a couple upgrades to go. Pretty much turned it into a large storage area. Unlocked Remy. Unlocked Mini. We've got most of these folks here. I was tempted to move one of them up to this section. Just haven't done that as yet. Donald's going to... We'll just plug through this quest quickly. Okay. Uh, actually, Donald. We'll hang out later. Okay. So, we've got Wally with his dump truck looking house. Goofy's here. Merlin's still at the back. Didn't move him at all. But if we look at the actual map. You can see I've got the Glade of Trust, we've got the beach, we've got Forest of Valor, and we've got the Sunlit Plateau. Still not done with a lot of the different activities in those areas, but at the very least have them all opened. Need to open up the Frosted Heights and need to open up the Forgotten Lands, which looks pretty cool from here. I'm not exactly sure, as I say, how far along this counts as or how deep but that's essentially the the breakdown. I haven't changed really a whole, whole lot in each of the different areas. I just found it much simpler to kind of leave things for the most part where they were. Didn't see the point in going and moving a whole bunch of things around whenever I felt that they aesthetically seemed pleasing enough, like Donald's house being here is not a bad spot for it. I did put Ursula's there just because it is such a cool kind of looking home. It's definitely not something you expect. Uh, you can see here that I've been, I was digging up a lot of materials because I wanted to make sure that I was able to get the materials I needed. My hope is that in the long run, with Moana and with Wally, that I can kind of, yeah, collect enough stuff from them that I don't have to do a bunch of collections of my own. And this is an interesting thing too, I don't know what prompts that, but every now and then the flowers will just kind of dry out, just random spawn flowers on the, the map, and then you have to water them before you can pick them up, which I found is interesting. Wally's farm, of course, is over here, which is essentially the original spawn point for it. Once again, not much movement in the grand scheme of things. But I am genuinely hopeful that as I upgrade both Wally's and Moana's, that I'll get to the point where things just kind of filter to me. This is the most recent area that I opened. I haven't even finished the cart yet for Goofy for being able to get the different vegetables to grow. It's filled with little alligators that are adorable and seem to run around like crazy. <laughs> Not sure exactly how to tame them, but this is the most recent one. Still haven't cleared these mushrooms yet to get further access into it, and I'm sure there's going to be 
plenty of additional characters that can go here. We'll grab this. All in all, I find that this game is very... Just take it at your own pace, do your own thing. Which is kind of nice. It's very, as I say, very reminiscent to Animal Crossing. It's very much a thing that... Uh, I should see if I could grab... Minnie and or Mickey. Grab one of my... Well, he's in his house, so maybe... Uh, actually, Minnie must be nearby, right? Sort of. <laughs> the warping is a nice feature. There's, there's a lot of elements where they really did take some of the annoyances of... Animal Crossing. Okay. I love how they also say goodbye and then they follow you. <laughs> I'll, early access, right? But it's just very funny that the character will be telling you, oh, goodbye. I'll see you another time. And then is running right behind you. All right, so let's make some space. Um, my boxes are all a little bit disorganized at the moment just because I was doing a bunch of different quests and whenever I did those, I kind of just threw all the stuff I had rather willy-nilly into boxes to get them just out of the road. There, that should be enough space. And now let's go. So this will help level up Mini, and because Mini, I assign the... Oops, that's another problem too. Because I've assigned Mini the gardening task. She'll get extra points from it, it looks like, and also occasionally gives me more stuff. Right now the lettuce was just to top back up for recipes. There's a few characters that are looking for some lettuce-based recipes. Uh, I could... Do I have the cart here? I do. These birds are really neat, too. I'm still not sure what you're supposed to feed them. I've tried a bunch of different things. And they always seem unhappy. So, not quite sure yet on that. Uh, let's grab a few chili peppers. That bird looks so mad. It's just right in front of my face, just like, what are you doing? <laughs> now, I've seen some stuff online that it's better to plant things in the zones that they come from. I don't know too much about that as to how truly good or bad that is, but for me, I find it's just more convenient to have them close to home where I tend to spend most of my uh, Dream Valley playing. Oh. Because I find having to run from zone to zone can be a little bit tedious. That said, you can warp so it's not like it's Terrible. I just I I find the game doesn't really, at least for me, need the warp. Oh, we're out of energy. You'd think by now, having made it to 28, that I wouldn't uh, run out of energy anymore. But I do still. I think I'm gonna make another little section of farming right here.
just a small little section. Oh, and that's always one of the bonuses for making these little spots is you get these puzzle pieces, which appear to be story related. The achievements in this game, if you're playing this on Xbox at the very least or on Game Pass, are rather intense, I would say. Because it's some of them are, you know, make a million coins and, you know, stuff that's pretty significant time investment. I think one of them's like make us a hundred thousand meals or something along those lines. Actually here. Let me take a quick we'll take a quick jump here and we'll take a look. Because they are quite yeah. Catch one thousand eight hundred fish, cook nine hundred meals, uh give five hundred and forty gifts Collect 1,800,000 star coins. Harvest 4,500 vegetables. They're they're pretty they're pretty uh, long term. Start a thousand daily discussions. Catch 1,800 fish. Complete 1,100 dream light duties. So that's your equivalent to your nook miles, essentially, your nook miles objectives. I just find it surprising that there is as much as there is that... I, I mean, the nice part is the achievements essentially direct you in the the right way as to how to make money. Food. Food, gardening, collecting. Are your big, big items for sure. And then of course, just just like Animal Crossing, you can collect the daily ones, which are your dreamlight duties, and then collect the bigger ones as it goes along. There's the events, which I'm doing okay at, I guess. I have been finding a lot of these one, these particular ones difficult, just because sometimes, especially early on, uh, if we go to Wally. So Wally right now wants a shiny citron, a blue star lily, or corn. So the blue star lily and the corn we can do pretty easily. But until you unlock the right area for even corn, for example. Uh, let's see. There's one. You may not necessarily... have the thing that you need or have access to it. Uh, white Daisy. Blue Star Lily. Orange Star Lily. I might not have that yet. I may have to go and actually grab that from one of the areas. Which is not a big deal. Just look it up and I can go and grab it. Nope, that might be... Those are the milkweeds. So yeah, we don't have a blue star lily. So stuff like that does tend to happen. Not, as I say, the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but it can make things slightly difficult. So right now, we want to find Wally, and he is where? Is he in the thing? No, that's mostly the frozen characters. There he is. Oh yes, the main reason I was grinding the beach down in the area was to make the Sen Garden, which is, I think, really cool. The crafting in this is pretty good. Most of it's self-explanatory. I do like that in cooking. There we go. You can cook stuff that doesn't need a recipe. You figure out the recipe from cooking it. There we go. That's much better. Cleared that one off the list. Which actually means because we're in the... Uh, I 
think I'm just gonna wait for the because I don't really need the other stuff so I might just wait and purchase the moonstone that may be the plan in the long run but not requiring you know to know the recipe to have to make it is a nice a nice element for this game you can and I'll use I'll use the restaurant as just a quick show and tell example of sorts so if I just need to cook something I can just throw whatever I want into the pot and see how it turns out so it's kind of nice that way because then you get a fair mix of options of things that you may just stumble across because you happen to throw it in there for example if I throw a bunch of sugar cane because I have a bunch of it and cook that up I've now learned candy which is a new recipe that I didn't have previously so things like that are pretty pretty neat pretty handy uh, a perfect day for a picnic. I do think I'm gonna have to do more bell pepper work but essentially yeah that's just kind of a quick quick rundown quick show-and-tell of this Animal Crossing Disney game Hopefully you guys kind of got a feel for some of the basics of how this is and I just wanted to kind of quickly show what's been my my recent addiction of sorts and also just been my uh, my kind of go-to. So yeah, thanks for coming and checking out this quick video and let me know what you guys think of uh, Dreamlight Valley and if you guys are playing it, uh, hopefully at some point there's some multiplayer so that we can all enjoy it together. Until then, guys, have yourselves a good one.